Hey there guys, how's it going and welcome to a video where I'm going to be testing out my budget gamer build from PC Specialist. I'm sure a lot of you know that recently I partnered up with them and I made three recommended builds over on their site for people who either want to get into gaming or for people who want a beastly gaming machine. Now the one I'm testing today is the budget gaming machine. It's £600 and with all of this configuration with Windows, all the decent specs, I think this is as cheap as you're going to get for a custom pre-built PC. You could save a little bit of money building it yourself but sometimes there's a bit of value in having it pre-built takes out the hassle of it as well so the specs of this thing this is an Intel i5 processor 8 gigabytes of RAM and a GTX 750 Ti graphics card and this graphics cards a bit elusive people aren't really sure if it is capable of handling the new games on some high settings so finally I've tested it out the number one question I would get in my live streams and sometimes in the comments is can this handle DayZ can this handle Battlefield 4 etc but I've tested it out now so let's go and have a look at the results. So first up we have the main game that I asked can this build run this game and this is DayZ standalone. Uh, now for reference most of these games I'm going to be playing in window mode in around 900p somewhere around that resolution. I actually quite like that resolution allows you to have it so you can see your taskbar on the monitor that you're playing on and gives you just that little bit extra FPS boost as well because 1080p is not always needed. I find full screen a bit obnoxious sometimes. I like going window mode and anything that gives you a little bit of extra FPS boost isn't too intrusive as well is pretty Pretty cool by me so most of these are going to be in this style of resolution also the FPS counter is there in the top left hand corner I'm using GeForce experience to show me that uh, it's actually a really nice thing you should definitely get if you've got an Nvidia GTX graphics card I think it's 600 series or newer it will allow you an FPS counter it will allow you to record games it will allow you to stream and all that kind of stuff so Daisy standalone how does it perform uh, this actually did really well this is the first test I did and I was really impressed I didn't expect it to do quite this well as you can see on screen when you're in kind of the uh, the open areas and the smaller towns you're gonna get 40 to 60 FPS uh, and I'll tell you guys the settings I'm using as well in a second because they're quite important to achieving this FPS I mean if you look at the sky you'll get 100 plus but that's to be expected look at the floor you get around 80 uh, when you go into a really busy town the towns and the buildings are the real things that hog the FPS in DayZ you'll be getting around 25 to 35 FPS in those areas but to be fair I think that's more to do uh, with DayZ even on my beastly 780 Ti rig I only get around 30 FPS in most of the town so very respectable performance uh, and this is on quite high settings in the game as well I'll let you know my settings to achieve this frame rate on any graphics card basically if this 750 I, uh, Ti can do this I'm sure most of your graphics cards will be able to achieve this so what I do is I put textures on high I put detail on low so object detail terrain detail on low that also allows you to see things a little bit better see people lying down stuff like that I I put clouds on very low for some reason I think the clouds look best on very low shadows here are on normal and every other effect like blur and uh, anti-aliasing I turn off maybe anti-aliasing I put on sometimes but all the post-processing effects I just turn off completely for me they make the game look quite blurred and it doesn't look very nice like that turn all of those off it looks nice and sharp still looks realistic to me and you get quite a decent FPS so the first game I've looked at here Daisy a definite yes so you can play this on quite high settings using these settings so that is a very good start Next up we have Titanfall, another recent big release, an FPS game so it's very fast paced so a high frame rate is definitely very uh, very desirable in a game like this. Uh, good news with this one as well, everything here is on medium settings and I got a solid 60 FPS. This actually locks to 60 FPS on this game, um, I don't know maybe there is a way of unlocking more but it was locked absolutely fine at 60 FPS on medium. You could probably play it on high as well but to be honest when I started playing and I was playing on medium settings I thought you know what this actually looks really good uh, so definitely a significant increase from a, a console version looks a lot better than it does on the Xbox runs dead smooth which is great for a game like this you definitely want it running very smooth so another tick there uh, for can this rig play this game Titanfall definitely looks sharp and plays really smooth Okay. 
Next game I tried out was Battlefield 4 and I have to say out of all the games I tested this was the one that gave me the highest frame rate. Uh, now the first one I tested out on was quite a big open map uh, so normally the FPS is quite high on maps like that but there's not too many like things going off in a small area. I mean I was getting like 100 plus FPS. You can see here in the top left hand corner over 100 FPS on medium settings uh, on this map. That was uh, really surprising to me. I thought you would never get over like 80 FPS. FPS in a, a graphics card like this. You've got to remember this isn't a traditional graphics card. It like doesn't use much power up. It hasn't got uh, any cooling on it or anything like that. Well, it has cooling, but it's like it's really small fan. It's nothing special. Uh, so I'm really impressed at the fact that this could compete with that. I think it's almost testament to how well optimized this game is. It's probably one of the best optimized games out there. And I even took the liberty of then going on to high settings and trying that out. And high settings, I was still getting 80 plus FPS. So uh, this was a really good one for the. The 750 Ti and for this build in general obviously I've got 8 gigs of RAM in this machine that might help as well uh, and on higher settings on some of the busier maps I actually went and played some domination so I had a close quarters map with loads going on at once uh, and it was stuck at around 60 FPS there so very good performance again uh, another good result for Battlefield 4 and probably some of the highest FPS I got in all of this testing The next game I tried out was Bioshock Infinite. This was definitely one of the best looking games of my opinion for last year. So I thought, you know, this is quite a good game to test out on. Definitely uh, an incredible looking game. I love the art style in this game. Everything looks super sharp. So I thought, you know, let's just go on medium settings, see how we do. So I stuck everything on medium. And as you can see here, again, over 100 frames per second. Uh, I don't know what kind of black magic sorcery is going on with this 750 Ti in this uh, build, but... Uh, very impressive, I've got to say. I, I put it up to high to test out high, and I was getting around 90 FPS on high. So uh, these two games, I mean, they must be really well optimized as well. But this 750 Ti obviously goes to proof. Can definitely handle a lot of the new games on quite high settings, at quite high resolution, especially if they're well optimized like these ones. So Bioshock Infinite is definitely up there with another one that performs very well on this rig. So I decided to try out Black Ops 2 multiplayer as well. Uh, I really like Black Ops 2 on PC for multiplayer. I think it plays quite well and looks quite nice. Ghost, I don't really like the look of it on PC. I don't know what it is about it, but it just looks bland. I think it's just the design of the game as well with the colours and so on. So I decided to hop onto Black Ops 2 and this was another one I was very pleased with. Uh, played on high settings, had anti-aliasing on this time and it was locked at a pretty solid 60 frames. I don't think it dropped underneath 60 frames at all. So you could probably even buy bump up some of the graphics here but for me just on these settings you can see it looks about as nice as it gets in this game there's nothing too crazy going on in Call of Duty in terms of like massive explosions and just loads of lighting it's just quite simple but looks very sharp and uh, another one that performed very well uh, on the rig so Black Ops 2 Call of Duty probably Advanced Warfare come up as well definitely one that you can run on this rig So the final game that I wanted to test out, I really wanted to give this thing uh, a difficult time and there's no other game uh, that will push a system more than Armour 3. So Armour 3, I wasn't really expecting it to run very well at all. And uh, it's definitely not running as smooth on Armour 3 uh, as it does on uh, some of the other games we've got here. I never went above 60 FPS in Armour 3, but I did manage to hold over 30 plus and normally sitting somewhere in the 40s. I actually did my own custom settings that I thought would be quite good, uh, but didn't actually look too nice. I got okay FPS, but I did auto detect on this game uh, and the game actually got some really nice settings going for me that made it look really good and didn't give me any FPS hit as well. With games like this that are really going to push your system, you can also use NVIDIA GeForce Experience and you can uh, choose it to uh, maximize the game, which puts it at the set that a lot of other people with your rig uh, do uh, run the game at and uh, that often works out really well. You can see here I've put the shadow 
shadows on before I didn't put the shadows on but I put them on and I feel that it makes the game look significantly better uh, and it hasn't actually had much effect on the frames per second so Armour 3 uh, a game that does actually depend on the server in terms of FPS as well some servers and some game modes will give you much worse FPS but if you do want to have Armour 3 try out Battle Royale and stuff like that the 750Ti will do that uh, so I think we can pretty confidently say uh, that there's no game that this uh, rig won't run on at least decent settings you can see I'm a three here looking quite nice and I really wasn't expecting that I was expecting it to run Battlefield 4 maybe 60 FPS Bioshock uh, somewhere near 60 FPS but for to get those games over 100 FPS and then also perform quite well with Daisy standalone which isn't that well optimized and armor 3 even running armor 3 as well uh, I'm actually really impressed with this rig so it goes beyond my expectations uh, for sure so if you're interested in purchasing this rig or if you want to build your own custom rig that's similar to this maybe you want to make some changes increase the processing increase the RAM take something out put something in you can do so with my link below the stream I have a direct link to this actual PC I have to mention there is UK and EU only for PC specialists they don't unfortunately ship to the US but any of you guys out in the US who are maybe thinking about getting a 750 Ti rig with 8 gigs of RAM and an i5 this goes to show you what it can do so maybe you found that useful as well so thanks for checking out the video guys I'd appreciate if you liked the video as well because I put quite a lot of time effort here into making a really good review of this and testing out all the different games that I could and that's it for now guys I'll see you next time